We're joined now by Dr. Alex Roccatelli, our Forage Systems Extension Specialist. Alex, everybody's so glad that it rained. Oh, yeah. Such a relief. What does that mean in terms of alfalfa production in our hay situation? Well, uh, I think that right now we are having a good hay production, right? Some producers might be getting some surplus of forage and say, thanks, I'm going to have something for the winter. But to the know, Hang all that excess right now might not be the best economic alternative. So you talked about leaving Bermuda grass for a while. What, what does that even mean and how do you do it? So that's what we call stockpiling Bermuda grass that I like to say is just a standing hay, right? And in the next two weeks might be the best time to start to, to do that if the producers think that that's a good and viable way because it can save a lot of money on just don't putting hay with all the costs that involve hay. So. Say someone does decide to stockpile Bermuda grass, what does the management look like over the next few weeks and months? So yes, right now would be the best time to start to decide on stockpiling Bermuda grass. First, I would say to a producer, go right now there and completely graze the field and place it like the Bermuda grass, pretty short at the two inches. And then by end of August, early September, it might apply 50 to 100 pounds of urea and let that Bermuda grass grow until the first killing frost. I would say November, early November, right? Let's say we're ready to graze cattle on this stockpile Bermuda. What kind of recommendations do you have there? So uh, let's say it's around November, the killing frost came and we have that good Bermuda grass there. I would say that a rotational grazing or even a, a strip grazing would be the best because you can have a higher utilization. But think about 60 to 65% utilization because more than that, uh, the material is starting to get more. The roughage, the part of the material, the Bermuda grass that is low in quality and so gains start to decrease. So that's pretty much when you talk about the grazing. And even though we can go and graze to January, um, I believe that the grazing in November, in December, that's the time that the producer can make the most. Now, we just want to spend a little bit of time talking about nitrate toxicity. We're still in August. We've had the moisture. It can get hot really quick, as we know. What do producers need to be aware of there? A week ago or more, some of those plants, uh, sorghum, sudans, or there was uh, planted in Johnson grass. It might have accumulated some nitrate in the the trick part is when you have a field that was high fertilized with nitrogen and the plants start to accumulate nitrate, after the rain comes, there is a spike of nitrate in the plant and after five, six days, that starts to reduce. So if you had your, your sorghum or a place that has lots of Johnson grass that was stressed and after came a rain, make sure to wait about five to seven days to cut for hay or to introduce cattle. Regardless, it's always important to get a, get a forage test. The best approach is to test for nitrate. If you're suspicious that you are cutting for hay or you have that forage there with lots of juice grass or if it's a sorghum or sorghum then there, uh, make sure to take some samples, uh, take to your county office and have that tested so you know exactly if that is good or not for the animal. And those tests are very inexpensive and they can turn them around quickly for something like this, right? Yes, exactly. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thank you. And to find your nearest county office so you can get a forage test, go to sunup.okstate.edu.